Hi, my name is Ciro Lopinto. I am the luthier <laughs> of uh, Rushlight Cigar Box guitars and, and banjos. Uh, I just want to give you a little introduction about uh, the instrument that I make, and then I'll have a couple other videos showcasing specific instruments and, and uh, their materials. Uh, so I make cigar box banjos and cigar box guitars. Usually there are three strings, sometimes there are more. Um, I could, you know, pretty much put as many strings as you want on them. Uh, so uh, the tradition of cigar box guitars, basically as long as there have been cigar boxes, people have been making musical instruments out of them. Uh, there's historically been fiddles and banjos and all kinds of things made out of them. Um, and there's a lot of information available uh, out there and, and a lot of people making them. But I am your local maker. So typically, you know, a cigar box, you know, look at that little, little guy right there. You know, it's just a simple little thing. Um, sometimes made of cardboard, sometimes made of wood. And uh, so back in the day, if you couldn't afford a, a catalog guitar or one from a music shop, if you were lucky enough, uh, your dad, or maybe took it upon yourself to make a little musical instrument out of it, they often used uh, screen wire, uh, you know, the, from the, the, the spring on it. Um, and a uh, broomstick for a neck and just stuck it through the body and played it with a slide and uh, they've gotten pretty sophisticated since then. I'm going to show you uh, two of the ones that I've made. Uh, I think I've kind of settled on a design and, and I've been making them as banjos. I'm a banjo player, that was my first instrument and, uh, and uh, I like the look and the feel of it as a banjo. So uh, I'll show you two of them that I have here. They're relatively similar in the sense that they have a, uh, a body that's made of a cigar box. And they have a neck that comes through the body. Comes right through, uh, comes out the other end. The strings pass up through the neck from the back. Use a standard uh, ball end string and uh, they end up up at the top with uh, three tuning pegs. Uh, they're open gear tuners. And then I added this additional peg uh, as a banjo, making it a, a changing from a three string instrument to a four string instrument. I've commonly made them as three stringers, which I still can. Um, I scooped the neck on them, uh, which you could kind of see right there like a old-timey uh, frailing banjo. It also gives you a little bit of a better dig, you know, when you, uh, when you dip in with your pick that you're not hitting on a fretboard or anything like that. Uh, they, they generally have sound holes in them. This one has a series of sound holes here on the bottom, and some across the top. Um, they're, uh, one of the traditions of cigar box guitar making and banjo making is using found items to construct them. Uh, so this uh, sound hole cover here is the top of an old uh, uh, tea strainer actually that I got at a yard sale um, and put the top on it. And then uh, on, so this one here has uh, sound holes and uh, you know it's more or less the same place. Um, this it's got a brass cover on it there and there's generally like uh, sometimes I use grommets to protect the sound hole I oftentimes at the top put a sound hole so that when you're playing it the sound comes up through there uh, on a lot of custom guitars they put those on they, it's kind of like a monitor so you could hear them on this one you know it's on the top and it's part of again part of that T strainer which uh, you can kind of see right there with holes in it. And, um, so I'm going to show you a little bit about how to play them. Uh, and then, like I said, on a separate video, I'll showcase each instrument so you can see um, the materials that are on. So it's, uh, this one is, and most of mine are, tuned to open G. So it's uh, starting with your lowest string here at the top. It's G, D, G. And then I have this banjo string up here, which is also tuned to G. So that's the uh, 
That's the basic foundation of it. Uh, again, that scoop neck there, that's where you get kind of the nicest, fullest sound when you strum over there or pick over there. And here it's a little brighter. So that's about the best, best sound right there. Um, I fret them. I used to tie the frets on like a loop because that's kind of probably the way that uh, the old timers did it. But uh, I like the regular stainless steel frets better. I think maybe nickel. I'm not sure what they are. But uh, I fret them diatonically like an Appalachian dulcimer. So uh, if you've ever played an Appalachian dulcimer before, uh, they, um, they are tuned diet, uh, fretted diatonically, I believe is the term, which means that they play best in certain keys and that the, the frets are left out that are not in that range, not in that key range. So uh, that's how I've always made mine, and uh, I enjoy making them that way because non-musicians or beginners can, can get an easy start on it, and uh, there's not a steep learning curve at all. So uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about the type of stuff you could do on it using a flat pick, and then I'll show you some other stuff too, um, uh, including finger picking, if I have my picks around here somewhere. So... Um, First would be you know, simple strumming. So when you strum like that open, it's a G. You could add a B to make it a truer G chord. A simple D chord would be. C. If you're a strummer and singer, that would be one way to play it. Uh, another way would be uh, melodically, you know, playing a melody. So, and you can get um, a simple fiddle tune type of a feel to it. tunes on it on Piper so uh, uh, so a standard G scale you can get very easily I added a fret in right in here to give you uh, some other notes that are not generally uh, on an Appalachian dulcimer so this fret here gives you a B flat and it gives you a F so in a G scale you have an F sharp and you have a C natural so uh, you could do a G scale So then, uh, because I added that other scale, you could also get a, uh, that other note, you can get a C scale. So if you start on a C note, it'd be C, D, E, F, oh, no, C, D, E, F. See, that's that extra fret right there. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If you're in G, it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And if you're doing... Uh, a D mixolydian scale, which is uh, has a C natural instead of a C sharp, so that's your bagpipe scale. Since I'm a bagpiper, your bagpipe scale uh, is right there. So you have your C, which is your low note on your pipes. So you'd be it's bagpipe scale. So you can play pipe tunes. Uh, let's just see, like. A So, because uh, it's a banjo also, you could pick it. Um, I don't even see my picks around, so I'm just going to pick without them.
ballad, like a like an old timey banjo, because um, I added the lovely B flat. Uh, they call that a one and a half. Um, you could do a modal type tune like uh, Clock Old Hen if you're familiar with that. I'll attempt a little frailing. I'm not much of a frailer, but you'll get the idea. So, and you can also, I'm not sure if you could see it from here, but if you were a, you know, more of a, a dulcimer player, like an Appalachian style dulcimer player, I mean, you can, you can just... can't play it just like an Appalachian also. So uh, that's, uh, that's my intro to Cigar Box Banjo. Um, and I'll see you on future videos and I'll show you a little bit about each of these instruments individually uh, so you can see the labor of love that goes into it. Okay, thank you again for your time.